Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help us out over here and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be covering in today's video is we're going to be looking at statics and we're going to be looking at equilibrium and we're going to be solving the problem shown on the screen and this will be our seventh part in our equilibrium or 17th part in our equilibrium series. So what we got going on here is that we have a movable bin and its contents weigh 700 pounds. And we need to determine the shortest chain length ACB that can be used to lift the loaded bin if the tension in the chain is not to exceed 1,250 pounds. So essentially what we have going on here is we have something that looks like this, <clears throat> where we are assuming, and we have to make some assumptions here, so we are assuming that this chain is being picked up directly in its center. So this thing is nice and level because if you picked it up more on one side, it'd be unlevel, which would be a little bit strange. So picking this up, we are assuming that this is an equal side to this side over here. <clears throat> so let's put on some dimensions that we know. We know that the total uh, length across is 48 inches. So that means if we're splitting right down the middle, we are 24 inches on each side in the horizontal direction for our chain. This 28 inches over here does not matter because that is only the distance of the bin itself. And we are only concerning ourselves with points A, C, and B, where the chain is being connected in and what is lifting it upwards. So essentially what we have going on here is that we have some kind of um, isosceles triangle forming here where we have the two equal sides. So let's draw a free body diagram and we'll see what's actually going on here. So I'm going to make point C the center of my free body diagram because that's where everything is connecting in at one point because this entire load of 700 pounds is going to be transferred through the chain and then back up into the actual hook where it's being lifted up. So I'm going to make point C my... Um, origin point for my free body diagram. And let's throw on our load. And since this crane is going to be lifting upward this amount of force, 700, that force will actually be going upward 700 pounds. And then I'm gonna have my two chain forces pulling back in the opposite direction. It's kind of thinking of this problem in an inverse direction. So now my two chains are gonna be going opposite that and they're gonna be in tension 1,250 pounds each. <clears throat> so we do know some dimensions here. So we can put on our little dimension triangles for our forces, which just gives us the slope of that force. So we have 24 inches in the horizontal for each of these. And this is pretty much it. So in order to determine the length of each of the chain, we need this um, hypotenuse direction for our dimension triangles. We need the overall ratio of these dimension triangles. Well, if we were to draw out that dimension triangle, make it a little bit larger here, we would have 24 inches up here, an unknown vertical direction, and this H, which I'll just get rid of this, this H is what I'm looking for, for one of my portions of the chain, and I would multiply that by two to get the full chain length. Well, not knowing the angle in which the chain is at and not knowing any of the other dimensions, this is where you have to use a little bit of a trick to get this problem to work. So let's write out the equilibrium equations first, and then I'll show you the trick on how to get this problem to work in certain problems that are like this. So looking at this free body diagram that I have, and knowing that everything is in equilibrium, so I have summing of forces in the F have to be zero, summing of forces in the X direction have to be zero. Well, does summing forces in the X actually help me here? Not really, because it's the same component of the 1250, just in opposite directions. So this really doesn't do much for me off the start. Well, in the Y direction, I actually have another applied force. So that will help me in working with this problem. So let's go ahead and let's sum forces in the y direction where everything has to cancel and be zero because it's in equilibrium. So I'm gonna have 700 pounds in the upper direction, so it'd be positive. And then I'm gonna have minus my 1,250 pounds 
And let's just take uh, this one over here on the left side. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just throw on an angle here. And let's just call that theta. And let's just call this one over here beta off of the x-axis. So looking at my left 1250, it will have a component in the downward direction because it's going down into the left. So each of these are going to have components in the downward direction. So it'll be negative. And this one will be sine of theta. And this one over here will also be minus 1250 pounds, and it will be sine of beta. And that's all I would have equal to zero. Well, a couple things that you may notice here. What is theta and what is beta? Well, we really don't know those yet, but because these are equal magnitudes and we have an equal horizontal dimension, and since it is a chain of equal force, equal dimensions being picked up right in the center, the angles that are going to form off the horizontal here are going to be equal. So instead of using theta and beta, let's just set them both equal to alpha, which will be the angle off the horizontal for both of them. So essentially, this Fy, once I make the substitution, I have 700 pounds minus off 2 times the 1250 pounds sine of alpha is equal to 0. Well, we could solve this for alpha and then get an angle and get a value for alpha, but let's go ahead and work it in terms of my actual answer I'm looking for, which is the height or my hypotenuse of my um, dimension triangle, which is half the length of my chain. Well, essentially what we have going on here is that this is alpha, the angle off of the horizontal. Well, since this is a right triangle and it always will be for the dimensions in the x and y, well, what is the cosine of alpha equal to? Well, that is equal to my 24 inches over my hypotenuse side, which is what I'm looking for. Well, let's rearrange for alpha, and it'll just be cosine inverse of 24 over h. Okay, so now I have something in terms of what I'm looking for, which is the my hypotenuse side, which is half the length of my chain. So let's take this whole thing and let's just dump it in here for alpha. So rewriting this FY equation one more time, we end up with 700 pounds minus off 2 times 1,250 pounds times the sine of the cosine inverse of 24 over h, where h is half my chain length, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, so now we can actually solve this equation, just have to do some algebra to get to that point. So let's do some algebra. We'll take the 700 to the opposite side, and then we'll take the 2 times the 1250 to the opposite side as well. So what we end up with is sine cosine inverse of 24 over h is equal to my 700 divided by 2 times my 1250, which gives me 2,500. The minus signs and everything will disappear here. And then I end up with this being 0 0.28. <clears throat> so moving on forward here, we would have cosine inverse of 24 over h is equal to the sine inverse of 0 0.28. So this portion right here drops down to be 16.26. So let's take the cosine of this. So I end up with 24 over h equals the cosine of 16.26. And this gives me 0 0.96. So essentially what I have going on here, it just takes a lot of algebra to get there, is 24 over h is equal to 0 0.96. Thus, h is equal to 24 over 0 0.96, which gives me 25 inches. So this is half of my chain length. So to get my full chain length, which is what the answer is looking for, I would just take 2 times the 25 inches, and that gives me a total of 50 inches for my chain length. So it's 25 on each side. 
So whenever you have problems like this, you just have to do this little trick sometimes. If you don't have enough information at the start, just draw a little separate dimension triangle, throw in an unknown angle, either off the X or Y, and then utilize the sine inverse or the cosine inverse of that angle and dump it back into your equation. And then you can solve it that way. So it's a little bit of a trick when you run into these types of problems that just have less information out there. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.